Hi, welcome back to another episode of SolidWorks Tutorials with Ryan. Last time, one of you suggested that I should designing an object in SolidWorks from scratch to end for our beginners. I just hit my microphone. And I thought, why not designing something simple like this, which is a perfume bottle from Yves Saint Laurent, which is sponsoring our video today. Not. And um, tell you how you can start designing a cylindrical body like this. I'm gonna make it see-through and there is a cap hexagonal shape and assembled into one body. Let's get started. Before we start, make sure to like and subscribe this video if you liked it, okay? If you think, oh, this video was good, hit the like button and subscribe. That's all I'm asking. Deal? In order to start drawing this part, I'm gonna remove the cap first focus on this bottle first now a typical cylinder hollow uh, that asks for a revolve if you don't know what revolves is revolves is a feature uh, located in your features tabs in SOLIDWORKS which uh, takes a profile as beginners focus on closed profiles so you have a 2d profile like a circle you have an axis of rotation and you can rotate this circle around this axis and you could create something like a donut, for example. In this case, the cross section of this bottle would be something like this, a, well, it has an area, but I'm gonna show you with the line. There's a line here, it goes down, it goes in the middle, it goes in the middle. So like this, again, this, this, this. And on this part, well, you can continue from here. Go up, there's this very small bump, and go up, go in, go up, go in the middle, and close everything here, like this. Let me show you. I don't have any right dimension, so I'm gonna go with my gut feeling. We need line, okay? In order to activate line, you can go to the sketch tab or hold the right click on the mouse, hold it, and move the mouse to the left. Now, we have to start from this line, which is exactly the vertical line that goes through the coordinate point of your um, sorry, works. And I'm drawing on the front. Uh, let me just look at this and draw. So I go here. This is a button that you actually press. I go down like this. Go up. No, sorry. Go right. Go down. A small bump. It's too big. Goes down. A little bit smaller, goes all the way here, goes all the way down, goes in the middle. Now we need a wall thickness uh, for the glass. On the bottom is a little bit thicker, so I go up like this. Here I just go to the right, go here, and you know what, I'm gonna close this here in the middle because we're gonna assume it's a solid body. Now this is what I have, all right? Let me go to the feature tab, go to revolved bus or base, pick it up. You have your uh, sketch area. You need to define an axis of revolution, and which for that I will take this axis and it will be rotated and boom now you might want to get rid of these sharp edges around the corner here you can click on the edge there will be a pop-up uh, fill it just pick it up if you don't have the dimensions just take whatever is suggesting you optically and click OK I just press right click on the mouse uh, as OK which is a shortcut for OK if you're in the features don't get lost to that so I'm noticing this bump, actually, if I say bump, you need to know what I'm talking about. Let me, the camera needs to focus on this. If it's not, I hope you can see it. There is a bump here and this is supposed to be that, but it's too big. So I'll try to just get this arrow, make it smaller like that. Well, Maybe I shouldn't have done this, but now that I have, let me explain to you how I'm doing this. These arrows that show up on the surfaces that I, I click on, show up and they allow you to instantly drag and push 
surfaces and change their dimensions and solubers. This happens only when you don't define or fully define your base sketch, which I didn't do. And therefore, your 3D model is really flexible. Uh, it, is, it is not a good thing, okay? And it allows you to just quickly, snappy, change the dimensions of that. Sometimes it's good, but, well, now you know. This is the bottle. As I told you, we wanted to make it see-through. There are two options. You can actually go to the this edit appearance, which I'm going to go in a second, or as a quick preview, you can click on this arrow over here and find uh, the revolution revolve one here and click here underneath the fourth column in front of the revolve. So activate this option. It would make the whole whole thing see-through, but this part is not see-through, so this is not good. I'm gonna uh, redo it again, go back, go to edit appearance, sorry this one. Boom, 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 boom. Now, so the whole part is selected here. You have to delete it because we don't want to change the appearance of the whole part. On the second option, you see select faces. Activate that and pick the glass faces of your part. So obviously, I will pick this top face. This uh, fillet face, the cylindrical one, zoom back, and this fillet one, and the bottom one. Now, we go to advanced. Here in illumination, you have an option called transparency. I will just bring it to whatever percent I want. And, okay. I have to mention something like this. The inner surface is not picked yet, so it's not see-through. For that, you have to also pick the inner surface, which I can tell you how, but it would distract the topic of this video. You basically can either right-click on the part, click on Select Other, and then pick it up. Just click OK. In this part, I'm going to cover the cap. So the cap is hexagonal. When I put it on the bottle, it will be stopped at that top surface of that bump I was referring to. The height of the cap is almost half the height of the bottle. There is this distance, which I don't have to uh, pay attention to because I only focus on the bump, which we did. If I look at it that way, I see that these edges are actually tangential to this circle. So it's easy. Let's just do that. To start drawing the base sketch for the cap, I need a plane or a surface. And as we said, the cap has to sit on the bump. The upper surface of the bump will play as a surface for the sketch. How? I just click on the bump. It gets highlighted in green. And I get a pop-up menu from that. I just select sketch, not edit sketch but the one below it, sketch. Press escape and select normal too, so we can be looking at it from the top. Now, if I go to the sketch tab and select the polygon, set it at six sides, click on the surface, oh, sorry, on the coordinate of the SOLIDWORKS, click on the coordinate on the solid, of the SOLIDWORKS, draw a big one, doesn't matter how big. Press escape to get rid of the polygon feature. Zoom back. Select one edge. Hold the control key down. And select the outer, very outer edge of the cylindrical part. Let go. And on the left side of the SOLIDWORKS, you see an option called tangent. Click on it. And there you have it. Now, obviously, there is this cavity inside um, the cap. But I'm going to do this in the next step. For now, I'm just going to extrude this part as a full solid body. Then I want to extract that cavity inside it. So that was easy. I just go to extrusion feature, um, extruded bus. I said the height is almost half the height of the bottle. 
can do it visually like this, something like this. In our case, yeah. Okay. Very, 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 very important. If I click OK, because this new extrusion, this, this new cap that I'm creating is in absolute contact with the bottle underneath it, they will be merged into one solid body. So you won't be having one bottle, one cap. It will be a shape that has the cap and a bottle, and it's only one part from SolidWorks point of view. In order to treat them separately as tr separate bodies, you need to uncheck merge results here and then click OK. In that case, you will end up with a multi-body mode in SolidWorks and you will see a new folder appeared here called Solid Bodies and it shows you have two parts, two bodies. One the, cap, one the bottle, one the cap. So basically this is the cap. As I promised, we need to extract that part from it, right? What's the best way to extract that cavity from the cap than reusing the very first sketch we did? Because we have the sketch already in place. We don't have to redraw it and then do a revolve cut. We're just going to use the same sketch, and I will tell you how in a second. So the sketch we used is hidden underneath the revolve because if you remember we use that sketch to make revolve and create the bottle so if i click on this side arrow next to revolve i will see a sketch one here which is not shown it's hidden if i click on it once and show show or, or sorry if i click on show on the pop-up menu next to it it will be shown in gray like this this gives me an opportunity to reuse this sketch for a new feature as many as as many times as I want. So what I want to do is to go to features tab, go to revolved cut, pick the sketch, and pick the line. So look what happened. I'm using the same sketch one and I pick this line again, the same axis to make a revolve, but this time it's a revolve cut. Since I have two bodies, one the, de one the cap, one the bottom, I have to define for SOLIDWORKS, since this is a multi-body mode, which body to extract this revolve feature from. I want this revolve to only affect the cap. So here in the feature scope, instead of select bodies, auto select, I deselect auto select and manually select the cap and then I click OK so by that the glass bottle itself would stay there and this revolve will create a cavity in the cap let me show you if I click on cross section here cross section of view And yeah, you see the edge. If I hide the first body, I'll show you how, how I hit it. I actually shown you before. It's uh, if you move your mouse on the body and press tab on the keyboard, which is covered in the other video I did on navigations through SolidWorks, you can hide that body. You see the cavity exists in the cap. Now I'm gonna press Ctrl Z to bring the body back. So this is the body. You can change the color to whatever you want and you basically have created your first multi-body object in SOLIDWORKS from scratch. Okay, I just picked black and this is more or less something like this, right? I didn't have the right dimensions, but this is something pretty, pretty optical and appropriate. I hope you liked the video. As I told you, it was a deal. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe button and the bell button next to it, which is really important. Make sure to check the new videos that I upload. And as always, if you go to the website, there will be weekly tutorials posted there for beginners, intermediates, up to pros. And you can follow those tutorials step by step. These tutorials are available for uh, members only, 
So if you are not a member, I suggest you to sign up and check the tutorials for free for one month because you have 30 days guaranteed cash back. If you don't want it, you can get it all back and uh, check for yourself. Hope you liked it. See you next week.